my wallet is absolutely disgusting as you can see here it's kind of like a tiger king inspired wallet with all the orange the black and even some brown thankfully i made better choices with what's in the wallet because it doesn't matter what's on the outside what matters is what's in the inside well that's what girls used to tell me when they would reject me that i was at least a nice guy and Oh, how's it everyone? I'm Shay Shokoyama and welcome back to the channel where we make finance fun. If you want to have the most fun as possible, please be sure to click that like button and subscribe down below. I'm trying to hit 1,500 subscribers by the end of this year and I don't think that I'll hit it honestly, but every little bit counts and it will make me feel slightly better about myself. And my gift to you is an in-depth tour of my wallet and what's in my wallet along with my subpar personality. The first card that's in my wallet at all times is the American Express Platinum card. Whether it's for flights, hotels, or for a paperweight, this card's got me covered. Okay, maybe I undersold the Platinum card a little bit because I do use it more for those three things. The obvious one though is for for flights. Literally anytime I book a flight, I use the platinum card. No other card that I have comes close to the five times points multiplier of the American Express platinum card. And not only that, the beautiful thing about it though is that I'll get five times points whether I book it through the Amex travel portal or if I book it directly with the airlines themselves. For the hotels, well honestly I don't really stay at hotels. I'm not bougie enough for it and I can't afford it right now. Like Airbnbs are way cheaper. So when I travel, I'm probably staying at an Airbnb. And for Airbnbs, I actually use a different card that I'll talk about later in this video. Moral of the story is if you see me in a hotel or you see me posting about a hotel, I probably didn't have to pay for it. Someone else is paying for it and I'm just mooching off of them. The one exception though is if I'm in Hawaii doing a staycation, I will probably use the platinum card. And that's because I could use something called comma Ina rates, which is basically a local discount for residents that live in Hawaii and also I could use that $200 hotel credit and also the fine hotels and resorts and the hotel collection benefits and credits with the platinum card. I did stay in a hotel not too long ago actually it was like a few months ago and I did use the Amex platinum card for it and it was you know really nice. I actually made a whole video talking about it up here and spoiler alert the platinum card was amazing the stay was amazing it was fantastic and I don't think it would have been the same experience well, obviously it wouldn't have been the same experience without using the platinum card. I then use the Amex platinum card for general purchases things that you just get like 1% cash back or one times points back in this case so if I don't have a card that will earn me more than one times or 1% cash back on that certain category I just whip out the Amex platinum card and there's two reasons to why I do that. One is so I could unnecessarily flex on the cashier and the other one is because the Amex Platinum card is a charge card so that means there is no inherent credit limit to it so when I'm putting transactions on here running up the credit line then I don't actually negatively affect my credit score. My second travel credit card is the Chase Sapphire Preferred. This was actually my first ever annual fee credit card so it has a special place in my heart. After having it for about a year I already have like three copies of this card unintentionally it was unplanned when I first got the sapphire preferred it was my daily driver I was using it all the time but unfortunately things have changed and I actually don't use this card as much as I'd like actually I barely use this credit card honestly I think the only time that I use this card is when I try to use my Amex cards and the business doesn't take American Express so I end up putting out my Sapphire Preferred. I think actually I do use this card for things like parking garage tickets and Airbnbs actually because you get 2x points on those general travel purchases. Except recently I booked a trip for next year and I didn't actually use the Sapphire Preferred for the Airbnb purchase. You'll see why, you'll see which card I use because it's actually gonna be the next card I'm talking about. But before I get to that card, you might be thinking, you might be wondering why do I even keep the Chase Sapphire Preferred card? If I don't even use it, it's $95 a year, so why would I pay the annual fee if I barely even use this card? And the answer to that question is, I'm trying to go for the Chase Trifecta. Right now, I only have two out of the three cards that I'm going for, and this card's one of the more important cards to have as a part of a Chase Trifecta. So I'm trying to think of the bigger picture, you know, that's why I hold on to this card. The other Chase card that I've already kind of previewed or you know hinted at is going to be the chase freedom flex card and this is probably the heavy lifter at least of the chase cards out of all the chase cards i have which is like two or three this is the one that i use the most as you know the freedom flex gives you five percent cash back on rotating categories throughout the year 
and I abuse the hell out of it or well, I try to. For example, this quarter, which is Q4 of 2021, the categories are Walmart purchases and PayPal purchases. All of my Christmas shopping, Black Friday shopping, and you know, personal shopping was all online. And most stores that you buy online will actually give you an option to check out using PayPal. And one of those purchases that I recently made was actually on Airbnb. So no, I did not use my Chase Sapphire preferred card to get 2x points when I usually would use that card because I could use PayPal through Airbnb to get 5% cash back or 5x points back on that purchase using the Chase Freedom Flex card. So right there, that $1,000 or so Airbnb purchase all of a sudden gave me around 5,000 Chase points. That's why I love the Freedom Flex card. You could do that all year round, of course, with different rotating bonus categories, but it's a no annual fee card. I mean, I love this card. Just remember guys, activate your bonus categories because you don't want to miss out on that easy 5% cash back. The next card in my wallet needs no introduction. And that's because I praise it so much, probably praise it a little too much, but it's the American Express Gold Card. You guys already know the deal. All of my food purchases, grocery purchases, you know, dining purchases, bar purchases, all go on this credit card. And on top of that, I do use the $120 of Uber credit each year and the $120 of dining credit each year. I mainly use the dining credit on Cheesecake Factory because I love their bread or Grubhub. I think actually one time this year though, I did use it at Ruth's Chris just to see what rich people eat. That's all the cards that I physically carry on me. But I do have some that I use quite often that I actually leave at home. Before I talk about those two cards though, let me just show you what else I carry in my horrendous Tony the Tiger looking wallet. The other bad thing about this wallet is that it only has three slots. My credit cards all go in this one and it kind of stretches it out a little bit Ugh, it's kind of disgusting you can't really see on camera but trust me yeah it's gross in this main pocket i have my boring insurance cards and about 20 dollars in cold hard cash i never carry more than 20 dollars in my wallet it's just me i just never use cash so why carry it around is that like a weird thing to do is that too little cash to have is that too much cash to have I don't think it's too much, but how much cash do you guys usually carry in your wallet? Last but not least, I have a stunning driver's license in this pocket. Bingo. Yes, this is a real driver's license. It's not McLovin's ID. It's actually nicer than his because mine is all shiny. You look at that. It looks like a Pokemon holographic card and it's got a bunch of rainbows. They can only select half of and it's like red and colorful. I guarantee that my ID, my driver's license looks way better than any of yours. All of your bland looking IDs and driver's licenses. I don't know where you're from, where you may be from, but I guarantee it's not as nice as this one. That's my hard flex. I bet you all of my 20 bucks that I got a nicer ID than you. I mean, just look at that smile. Look at that. Oh my God. Right? Stunning. Okay, the first card that I use often, but I don't keep in my wallet, is my Amazon Prime Visa card. This card sucks outside of Amazon, and that's why it will never see the light of day. With this card, I get 5% cash back on Amazon and Whole Food purchases. But you can only pretty much use that cash back for Amazon credit. It's nice to get a little discount off of all my Amazon purchases once in a while, but honestly, I wish that this card collected Chase points, the same Chase points as my other Chase cards, so that way I could combine it and transfer it out to more travel partners. But no, Amazon and Amazon Visa does not let you do that. <laughs> Big thumbs down on that one. I do shop on Amazon quite a bit though, so I may actually consider looking for a new Amazon credit card because I don't know if I'm too happy with this one. The second card that I don't use, well, that I use often, but don't physically carry with me is the Apple card. Basically another junk card. I don't use it outside of Apple. I only use this card for my iCloud storage and my Apple Music subscription. And actually I finance my iPhone 13 on it too. As a special surprise to you guys, consider this a little Santa special, if you will. I do have a list of credit cards that I keep on my phone in the notes app. It's nothing special that I want to get in the future. It's credit cards that I'm trying to plan for. So here's a nice screenshot of part of that list and it's very ugly. Yes, one and two unorganized. And also I change this list so often. So it's, it's never really set in stone. I'm currently over the chase 524 rule. So that's why I'm waiting so long to get my next card. And I've been waiting for pretty much like a, a year now and it sucks. I hate it. Like get me out, please. 
20s. I really want to bang out a bunch of chase cards as you can see here on my list before I move on to the other cards because being in chase jail sucks. Yes, I do have the Amex Centurion card on there. Just a little sneak peek. Will I get it? IDK. Maybe if I get 1500 subs by the end of this year, I could get it. So, um, Please be sure to subscribe down below. <laughs> Just joking. Please don't subscribe for that reason. Don't give in to peer pressure. Well, thank you so much for watching this far into the video. And if you're still bored, be sure to check out these videos. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Shoots.